destroy the foliage of shade trees and many shrubs. They may be checked by spraying, and trees that are free of them may be protected by banding the tree trunks with grease. The caterpillar at the lower right is changing its skin after three days of feeding. In molting, the skin splits in front. The caterpillar wiggles and wiggles, finally pulling itself out of the old skin. At the end of the first month, the caterpillar has an odd costume, though not a pretty one. The mass of bristles helps to protect this creature from hungry birds. Several days later, the caterpillar again molts. Each successive change reveals it in a different color and pattern. The four white tufts of hair along the back have given it the name tussock moth. The body is striped yellow and black. Other tufts of long black hairs help to give it a distinctive appearance. The larva of the white marked tussock moth feeds almost continuously often stripping trees and shrubs of their leaves. It eats the harder leaf veins as well as the softer parts. Now that the caterpillar is full grown, it travels about until it finds a place suitable for building its cocoon, usually a tree trunk. However, this caterpillar, between two leaves, is spinning silk threads about itself the silk coming from spinnerets near the mouth. It weaves the hairs from its body into the cocoon, which is grayish-brown in appearance. A marvelous piece of workmanship, a striking example of the building skill of insects. Here, the top part of the cocoon has been cut away to show the creature changing from a caterpillar to a pupa. After a few days, the pupal skin forms under that of the caterpillar. When this has been done, the caterpillar skin splits open in front. The pupa slowly frees itself. Notice that the pupa is short and stout, whereas the caterpillar was long and slender. After a while, the pupa skin hardens and takes a definite shape. It also darkens in color. Two or three weeks later, the cocoon begins to show activity. Then a head appears at the top of the silken chamber, and after a while, the entire body comes forth. This is a female tussock moth. Like all females of this kind of moth, she never has more than the crude beginnings of wings and stays near the cocoon from which she emerged. Here she awaits her mate. Another cocoon is breaking open. We know that this is a male tussock moth because it has well-developed wings. The male rests near the cocoon for about an hour. Then his wings will have developed and become strong enough to carry him wherever he wishes to go. The male is grayish brown in color. He has feathery projections on the outer margin of the wing. He is not a beautiful moth, even though the caterpillar is considered a beautiful creature by some people. On his head are two large feathery antennae. It is extremely probable that through these, even at long distances, the male scents his mate who still remains near her cocoon. At any rate, the male in some way finds his wingless mate. The female lays about 400 eggs on the cocoon, beginning at the bottom. She covers them with a frothy substance which helps to protect them from the winter weather. Having completed the important functions of her life, the female dies. Even though many moth caterpillars damage plants, clothing, and furniture, others supply us with silk, and many moths aid in the cross-fertilization of flowers.